<laughs> okay, how's it going YouTube? Happy Saturday and today we are making those hot buttered pretzels. I've been promising you guys. My kids are home this weekend and it is a perfect time to make these. It's cool outside. Um, it's not real hot. I can run my oven and the kids are home to eat it. So um, let's make some hot buttered pretzels. Okay, the first thing we are going to need is two cups of warm water. We're gonna use two tablespoons of yeast. Now I am doubling this recipe because quite frankly, <laughs> One batch is not enough for my family, but if you are interested in the single batch recipe and you guys have, I know many of you have the King Arthur uh, Baker's Companion Book, uh, this recipe is found on page 229, just for reference. So two tablespoons of yeast, I'm using instant. Okay, to this I am adding two teaspoons of sugar. I'm also gonna just kick my kneading tool to the side so it's a little easier. All right, to this we are going to add five cups of all-purpose flour. I am also adding one teaspoon of salt. And that does it. It's a really easy recipe, you guys. So let's get this up here and let's get this kneaded. Now once this gets all incorporated into a nice ball, I'm going to get my mixer, <laughs> my new um, timer. And once it's all incorporated, I'm gonna set it for five minutes. Even though this, um, this mixer needs in four minutes, most of you guys are gonna be using um, a mixer that needs in five. So we're gonna just do five and roll with it. Now this dough is going to be a bit stickier than the normal dough, the normal bread dough that we make together. So um, just be aware of that, it's totally normal. We're gonna be rising this a little bit different. We're gonna be putting this in a bag to rise. And we're gonna be also dusting it with some flour. So a little bit different than what we normally do. All right, so that's nice and incorporated. I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer and um, and I will see you guys back here in five minutes okay guys so there is five minutes and you guys can see inside my bowl I'll tip you in it is nice and clean so now I'm just gonna go ahead and lower this make sure your hands are really clean for this part now the dough is going to be a bit sticky so you're gonna want to dust your hands with some flour. So I'm gonna just take you on <laughs> over here and I'm gonna aim you down here and hopefully you can see that. And then I've got my plastic bag and what I want is a bit of flour Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flour on my counter and then actually I'm gonna take off my rings here because I want to dust my hands with a bit of flour when I take that out of the bowl I don't want it sticking to me I'm gonna get it all right so here is our dough and it is soft and very, I mean, it's very soft. And it is a bit on the sticky side. All right, I'm just gonna put it in my flour here. And I don't want to incorporate the flour into this. I just want to dust it in flour. Now this part is important. Um, you know, I like to test out recipes before I share them with you guys. So I kind of know uh, the, the kind of kinks that you kind of run into when you're making it. And that way I can better help you guys get the results that you guys are looking for through my mistakes. So 
in my experience, when we put this in the bag, let me get rid of my bowl here. As it rises in the bag, uh, it's going to get sticky and it's going to explode. And so you're really going to want to make sure that this is well coated in flour. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to really get it out of your plastic bag very easily. <laughs> so um, coat it well in the flour without mixing it in. Okay, we just want it coated. And then you're going to just get your bag. Now, I'm just using a uh, bread bag. I buy them. Uh, it's 100 in a box. Let me show you. I get them at um, Walmart. Okay. They're just twist high, extra large bags. Um, and they, they come with the, like I said, the twist tie. It's 100 bags. And these are $2. And that's what I store all my bread in. Um, so that's what I'm using for this. So I'm just going to pick this dough ball up. As you can see, I'm going to put it in my bag. All right, I'm going to take, I'm gonna grab my cloth here. Because I can't stand messes. If I don't clean up after myself, I'll end up with a really huge mess at the end. And then, uh, and then I want to cry when I have to clean the kitchen. So let me clean up my mess here. And I'm going to keep it right here under this light because my oven light isn't working. Um, and directly under this under cabinet light, it's really warm. Now, I don't want to tuck this bag under, okay? I want to give this flour some room, um, or flour, uh, this dough room to grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely close it up here. Okay, I'm just going to kind of put my little rag there. I want to make sure it's kind of in the middle. So it's got room to grow back here and it's got room to grow up here, but it's closed off so that no air can get to it. So I'm just going to fold my little rag here. All right, now we're going to let this sit and we're going to let this rise for 30 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to preheat our oven to 500 degrees. Um, this is a really easy recipe. We're not using baking soda in it. It's not going to have a funky taste to it. We're actually going to use sugar water to apply our um, pretzel salt. If you don't have pretzel salt and you can't find pretzel salt and you don't want to order it online, um, I found mine at the uh, Mennonite store. Um, if you can't find pretzel salt, you can use kosher salt. I've made this with kosher salt as well um, and it works. So, um, we're going to let this sit 30 minutes. I'm going to set my timer right now and um, preheat my oven to 500 degrees. And in 30 minutes, you guys, I will be back and uh, show you the next step. Okay, guys, so it has been 30 minutes and you can see that the dough has completely taken over almost the entire bag. So what I'm going to do... And this is where coming, you know, getting it nice and floured comes in handy. Because otherwise it would stick. So I'm going to add a little bit, a little bit more flour here. And a little bit on my hands. I'm just going to get it out of this bag. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, I doubled the recipe. So instead of eight pretzels, we're making 16. Because I don't know about you, if you're going to go ahead and do this, you might as well make 16 pretzels. Because to me, <laughs> in this house, eight is just a test. <laughs> it's just a tester piece. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and divide this now into uh, 16 pieces. So I'm going to do that first by dividing it in half. And then, and I want to keep it not stuck anywhere. And then from there, in half. Half and half and half. And 
<laughs> Mina is waking up from her nap because Matt is home and she heard daddy come home and that's all she needed here. So two, four, six, eight. I'm gonna do the same thing here. It doesn't have to be precise. At least it doesn't for me. So there we have it, eight pieces. So, let me get rid of this extra flour. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bowl, and to this we're gonna add a half a cup of warm water, and I have a spoon here to stir it, and we are going to add one teaspoon of sugar. Get some sugar here. Now this is gonna be enough, at least it, it has been for me, to do all of my pretzels in. So no baking soda or anything like that, which to me gives it a weird taste. This works great. I've had somebody um, say to me that they can't, for the life of them, can't get the salt to stick and using this warm water and sugar, you wanna make sure you dissolve the sugar, um, works like a charm. So there we have that. So I'm gonna set this aside now. I'm gonna just set it right over here because I want you guys to still be able to see what's going on. Okay, so I have two cookie sheets and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray them with some non-stick spray. Okay, so we're just gonna roll this out. And then all you do is when you get a nice long piece here, it's twist, twist, and then down we go. Now I don't make the prettiest pretzels, <laughs> but they don't need to be pretty to be good. So there we have it, all right? Just like, just like that. And then I'm gonna take this pretzel and I'm going to dip it in my water, okay? Just like that. And then I'm gonna lay it on my, to make sure that your counter stays dry. All right, I'm gonna roll it out. Okay, when it's rolled out, it's up in a circle, twist, twist down and then just kind of stick your stick your dough just like that and then dip it in your sugar water and put it on your cookie sheet and then make sure you dry your hands because you don't want any water hitting this dough all right so let's do one more together and then i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and get my pan full. All right, so nice long rope. Up, twist, twist, down, and stick. Just like that. All right, and then dip it in your water, and then put it on your pan. All right, guys, so I'm gonna keep going okay, guys, here. So then, after I dip them, when I get a sheet done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to add some pretzel salt. Now, I've made these pretty salty before and I'm trying not to do that this time <laughs> because they were pretty salty before. So you wanna, if you're using pretzel salt, be a little liberal with it um, and you will be good. So, I'm gonna take you over and grab my jar of salt here and then we have these and again you want to set your timer and let these rest for 10 minutes before you bake them okay and the actual baking time are the, on these are gonna be eight to nine minutes at 500 degrees. So you wanna keep an eye on them. 
I believe last time it was between 9 and 11 minutes for my particular okay, oven. Okay guys, so my timer has gone off. These have sat and rested for 10 minutes. I'm going to put both cookie sheets in the oven. Halfway through, about the uh, 4 or 5 minute mark, I'm going to switch racks so they cook evenly. And then of course bake them. Um, directions say 8 to 9 minutes. My oven bakes more like 9 to 11 minutes. So just keep an eye on them. You want them nice and golden brown. So once they're golden brown, pull them. Them from all right, the guys. So here are all of our pretzels, minus three that I couldn't fit on this um, on this pan here. And so what we want to do when the pretzels come right out of the oven is we want to brush them with melted butter. All right. So I have here six tablespoons of melted butter. And you want to do this when it's still really hot. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these first. Then I'm gonna walk over to the stove and do the, um, do the other three that are over there. And this is gonna soften them right up. But how easy was that, you guys? I mean, you can have your own mall pretzels in no time and of course you know control the salt all you want you can even leave the salt off if you want but my kids love this and today I had a few extra minutes to try to turn on that camera for you even though my house was still a bit crazy <laughs> and it's still a little wild um, but you got the gist of it so yummy yummy all right I'm gonna hop over to my stove right now and I'm gonna hit the other three that are on that pan over there really quick and just a side note the directions say to keep basting with butter even though it seems like you have enough butter you want to just keep adding until you've used it all up because this is like one of the main ways of getting that buttery pretzel taste. So, all right, there you have it. Now, this is super hot. I'm going to let this cool down just a little bit, at least until you can touch them because right now they are, <laughs> oh, they are hot. And then I'm going to have my 16-year-old who loves these. I think he ate like, <laughs> he might have eaten 10 of them the last time I made them. He's going to taste test them for you. And he said that he'll go on camera for me. So we'll see. But I'm going to let these cool a little bit. I'm going to probably transfer them to a, um, a wire rack um, just to let them cool so that they don't get soggy or anything on the bottom. And um, just let them rest. And then, of course, you can enjoy. Dip them in cheese or you can dip them in mustard. We like mustard here at this house. Uh, but it's up to you. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if I can get my 16-year-old on camera to taste test this since Matt's at work, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Zach's going to taste test. But just, well, you can pick anyone. These are the, like the little extras. That's a small one. You want a small one? Okay. Mm, that's pretty good. Better, Better with less salt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> good? Mm -hmm. Alright. It's teenage it's teenager approved. So like I said, I'm not a a pretzel um you know good pretzel shaper, but uh not bad. Oh, I'm getting better the more I'm making them, but <laughs> Um, you can also make these into like pretzel sticks or like, you know, like the logs. You roll them into a log shape instead of the actual pretzel shape. So that's something to think about too. I was thinking about rolling a hot dog in them and then, you know, dipping them and then sprinkling them with salt. I think they'd be really good. So that's another thing I'm going to try out with this recipe. So if you give this recipe a try, comment down below, let me know. And um, yeah, who knows if you're interested in uh, me testing out this recipe wrapped around a hot dog, 
let me know. Uh, it's summertime and I thought that'd be great, you know, that's a great kind of um, handy meal for the kids, you know, it's like a grab and go. So, alright, let me know. I will talk to you guys later and I hope you enjoyed this video. Alright, bye guys.